city job, you're not going to be rich, you're not going to starve. But again, I, even as a little kid, I w always wanted to be a cop. So even say, oh, I, some kids want to be firemen, they want to be baseball players. I wanted to be a cop. Giuliani, pro-enforcement. Um, he started enforcing all, they enforced all laws, they didn't overlook anything. Stop and frisk does actually help prevent crime. Turnstile jump doesn't seem like a big crime, but actually we had one here last week. The guy jumped a turnstile, the cop stopped him. Lo and behold, the guy had a 45 caliber in his waistband. So this little program that the New York City Council wants to curtail somewhat, it's not gonna work. Who is behind financially supporting these agitators, what they are? They're not people who've been victims of police. You know, there are the people that, you know, can claim to be victims, justify, unjustified, victims of police. But who are these people that all of a sudden show up? They're like professional protesters. If you look at some of the signs that they're bringing, yeah. these are professionally made signs. Any grassroots, you know, they'll take out a Sharpie or paint from their garage and make their own sign. But these signs, I mean, George Soros, is he behind it? Possibly. You're entitled to demonstrate. The police should be there too, to do two things protect the demonstrators to give them their right to demonstrate, but also make sure it doesn't get out of hand where it becomes a danger to other people. It doesn't give you a right, though, to assault cops, even though if it is an anti-police rally, who's protecting them at the rallies? And as of recent, back... The one um, on the Brooklyn Bridge when the cops the got Brooklyn attacked. Brooklyn Bridge when the cops got attacked. But who's walking alongside the protesters, protecting them to keep them out of the street? It's the police, the same, very same police that they're attacking. I, you know, I have a feeling it's, it's only going to get worse. This anti-police rhetoric, it, it, it's got to stop. And it starts at the White House and at City Hall. I don't know if they ever, they never published. He's, he has like 47 previous arrests. I don't know if he's ever resist, resisted arrests, previous incidents. I haven't read anything that says, you know, any prior run-ins um, he um, resisted. You know, my personal feeling is, they came up with a new way to make money. Him and this guy, they were gonna, he was going to give the cops a hard time so the cops could film it, and they'd have a lawsuit. Never expected this man to die. Have an asthma attack. He had, I mean, the man had multiple medical conditions that would do it. And that's my personal feeling is that he was going to resist, and they were going to make money on the, on the film. Tragically, the guy died. So it changed the game plan. And that's how I believe, and I'll always believe that, and I'm sure someday you'll get it from this perp the guy that video it. That was the game plan. A new way to make money. Instead of selling Lucy's, we'll get a lawsuit from the city. Because the city has no problem writing checks. Yeah, what does it take to get rid of you? 50,000 and this that. The city's great for writing checks. Small amounts. When these people um, sue the city, the city has no problem. They'll give you ten, twenty thousand dollars to get lost. Won't fight it, won't even investigate it. They'll just write your check. The guy that took the cell phone video it was the Hispanic guy. He's still in jail. He's still in jail, right. Um, what they don't tell you, I think he was purport, he had purported ties to the Latin Kings. They don't tell you that. The cops call it ghetto lottery or ghetto lotto. Set the cops up, easy payday because the corp council and all that, pay it right out. They pay it. They, they don't pay even investigate it. Right it. They, they don't won't investigate, investigate them. them. If the taxes weren't so high here in New York City, what is it, 13 $14 a pack? I don't smoke, yeah. but would you have to be selling Lucy's? I guess not. They come in and they do interviews. You know, and they're just in it, I think, for the ratings. There's nothing wrong. The, the, the people have the right to know, and it's nice. But tell the whole story, not edited tapes, which is a problem with a lot of things. Problem. They're showing you a portion of the tape that they want you to see, not the whole complete incident or all the words. You know, it's edited out. Right? Hands up, don't shoot. Hands up, don't shoot. They jumped on that right from day one, and what happened? It took off. And still to this day, when all the protests are going on and the signs, what do you see? Hands up, don't shoot. Right now, yeah, they're under attack. They're under a big attack. And the problem is, you have a mayor, an overwhelming majority of city council could not care less about cops. If you'll poll them, you'll find out they hate cops. You have a mayor has absolutely no use for them. I could name President three. City Council, is that still calling that President City Council? No, the city council speaker? Yeah, speaker now. City council speaker. Has no use for cops. Mark Viverito. You know, She's, um... You got Sandinistas running the Well, New York she was city a government. sympathizer, yeah. Yeah, they're and running she... New York City government. Yeah. You know, and it's overwhelming majority of them anti-police. They have no use for... She's a Che Guevara supporter. They enjoy the privilege of being chauffeured around police cars, having a pile of detectives who earn big money protecting them. 
They enjoy. And that, and that goes even too for the controller. He's, he's chauffeured around by police vehicle, police personnel. Pull their security one day, let them ride the subway you know, alone. The Blasio tribes tra travels with mini army. When you go, you know, chase car, the other car, this, you know, and he travels, you know, I've been at things with him. I've seen six or seven of his people show up. That's his advance team. That's not the people travel with him. Advance people to get there before he gets there. Yeah, even uh, his son and daughter have it. Right. Dante's got his own drivers. He's got a Suburban. You know, and, and, the and wife they, they and turn daughter. around, you know, cops this, cops that. But meanwhile, they, they enjoy the luxury of having, being surrounded by cops. They have armed people around them all the time. And if they're going somewhere, you know damn well ahead of time, if he's going somewhere in Brooklyn that's notoriously bad, they're going to have a whole police presence over there at least four or five hours before he gets there to make sure there's no problems. They're pulling people off the streets. That's right. They'll have people on rooftops. They'll do like when the president comes in. They'll secure an area. They'll yeah, freeze the zone. They'll put emergency service unit snipers up on the roofs you know, if they him, have to. Let them get out and walk down the regular street and see what happens. You know. Without the protection. That's what I'd love to see. You know, that's the joke with these politicians and the police. They hate them, but meanwhile, they enjoy the fruits of the protection New York City cops provide them. When they had the Diana Ross concert that time in 83, where they rioted, I was up there. People, I mean, people stabbed, slashed. It was just a total chaos. No one cared, but you know when, when they really cared? Because these roving bands went up to the Tavern on Green and smacked rich white people around. Now the police department mobilized thousands because some rich white person got smacked at Tavern on the Green. What about the 400 people stabbed during the, the concert when it rioted because of the lightning and the rain and this? Oh, I guess it was the Tavern on the Green people. People want to enjoy their food in Tavern on Green. You know, it's always in Manhattan. Never smack a rich white person because it's going to be a problem. Yeah, you're going to. You'll you know, do the time. Don't mug somebody on Park Avenue, Central Park West. You know, Fifth Avenue. Be very careful. You know who you mug around those places it's because right. be it's going to be a problem. Because if you look at Manhattan, the Manhattan Detective Squads are all full compared to the Detective Squads, East New York and those areas. You know, basically, let's say, you know, the ghetto areas, their detective squads aren't as full as Manhattan detective squads are. So it shows you where the true caring is. Anywhere 59th Street to the ferry. Oh, if Black Lives well, Matter, why does not uh, the Blasio put up to more detectives there? If you go Central Park West and this, then up to 86 around there. Right, if Black Lives Matter, why doesn't yeah. de Blasio put more detectives and more police you in know, those neighborhoods? If you look at where the abundance of detectives are, they're in Manhattan. All lives matter, you know, and it should, you know, and, and it's a shame that people take a tragedy and they just blow it out of proportion. That's, that's worse than the incident itself. I actually read one report, don't recall the media source, and I read a lot of media, uh, about Baltimore and Freddie Gray. Now, one source, was, I don't know if it was a social media posting, something to the effect that if um, Freddie Gray's killers do not get convicted and sentenced to jail, that Baltimore's going to burn. So, I mean, don't you want justice? Justice has got to be applied evenly on both sides. The cops are entitled to the same. We, st we still don't know what happened there. Hopefully we'll find out. If somebody did something wrong, well, then they have to answer for it. But if you don't get something you like, you're going to burn it down? You're going to burn down your neighborhood? And do you think these cops in Baltimore are going to want to go back to that? No. And I belong to several police groups, and there might be a Baltimore officer or two in there, and already I know some of them are looking to switch departments. They don't want to deal with Mosby and the mayor down there. They said they've had it. You know, a lot of the people in these areas do appreciate the police. They don't openly show it. They can't show it, but they do appreciate it. You know, and I can see from my years in narcotics and other things, they are happy you're out there doing it. You know, um, it, it, but like I say, they, they just can't say, you know, they can't come out and clap and something like that. You know, but they're happy. They smile. They see you. They smile. When you hit one of these drug houses, they smile. When you go in and you're, and you're coming out with everybody, they, they give you a little smile. Look, when they were chanting for the death of those cops, what happened? Officer Ramos and Lou were shot that Saturday in their patrol car just before Christmas, assassinated. Yeah. And they said, when do we want dead what do we want, dead cops? When do we want them now? Well, they got them. And that's why the police community 
is up in arms. And cops, I think they're gonna they feel a little hesitant because why? I don't wanna be sued. I don't wanna be arrested. I don't wanna be called a racist. We don't want the riots. So they say, you know what? I can get paid doing nothing for eight hours. I'll put up my windows in a radio car. In the summertime, put the air conditioning on high. In the winter, the heat on just as high. I won't get hot, I won't get cold, and I won't get arrested, I won't lose my job, I won't lose my pension, I won't be on the six o'clock news, I won't be branded a racist, they won't be protesting outside my precinct, my mother's house, who needs it?